If you had to choose a singular bike for the rest of your life, you wouldn't pick something that's just good at one thing, right? You'd pick something evergreen, something that's comfortable, not too committed, but when it's time to drop a gear and disappear, you want it to not feel out of place. That's exactly what this bike is, the newly launched Triumph Speed 400. This promises oodles of fun at an affordable price targeted to a younger generation of Triumph owners. Do you think that is going to attract the youth of India? Well, we already have something that is very attractive. This over here is the Duke 390. Loads of tech, looks like an alien spaceship and well, has been the benchmark in this segment since well, forever. But we cannot be having a shootout with these two bikes without addressing the elephant in the room uh, or the segment which is the Dominar 400. Before the Triumph came out with such crazy pricing, this was the ultimate bang for buck bike. So what you say Soham, let's take all the three bikes out and see which one is the best entry level performance bike to come out of Chakan. Yep, sounds like a plan, right? Right? So let's get one thing straight, what bike does exactly what? Let's start with the Duke 390. It is a 373cc single cylinder engine, makes about 43 bhp and 37 newton meters of torque, weighs in at just 171 kilos, is equipped with WP Apex USDs up front and a WP Apex monoshock at the rear. And if it was a shock to anyone, the Duke is the fastest motorcycle in today's video by a country mile. It is the most edgy, powerful and explosive motorcycle in today's test. Next is the Speed 400, Triumph's all-new roadster built to take on the likes of the X440, CB350 Highness and other bikes. It gets a brand new engine, more on that in just a minute, 43mm USDs up front, a rear monoshock, weighs in at just 176 kilos and is probably the second fastest bike over here. Last but not the least is the Dominar 400, the cruiser motorcycle made to make long trips on two wheels a breeze. The Dominar 400 shares a bunch of stuff with the KTM Duke 390 but its character and dynamics aren't even close. The Dominar makes 39.2 bhp, 35 Nm of torque, is the heaviest of the bunch at 193 kilos, gets 43 mm USDs up front and a monoshock at the rear just like all of the other bikes. All bikes are equipped with dual channel ABS as standard. The Duke and Dominar get 320mm discs up front and a 230mm disc at the rear, while the Speed 400 gets a 300mm disc at the front and a 230mm disc at the rear. Now you would assume that this 398cc TR series engine would share quite a lot of tidbits with the Domi or the Duke, but you'd be very wrong. This is an all new fuel injected liquid cooled 398cc engine that pushes out 39.4 bhp and 37.5 Nm of torque. Given that this bike only weighs in at 176 kgs, that sounds like a pretty good recipe for a Hoon, as a Triumph should. You also get traction control and ABS as standard to keep you in check while sending it. One thing that you've got to admit is that the Triumph Speed 400 has got the perfect ratio between modern and retro, with the modern touches like the digital instrument cluster, the golden upside down forks and the very sharp alloy wheels being offset with the retro touches like the teardrop shaped tank, the stylized side panels and the raked rear. All in all, this bike would look at home in a Triumph showroom with fantastic finish and build quality. This is nothing less than a very well built bike. But what we are left to see is if the Speed 400 stands the test of time in terms of build quality. When it comes to aesthetics, the Dominar 400 cannot be called striking, but it's always been designed to look like a conventional bike. Yes, most of the design has been centric towards the bulk of the tank, but you do get quite a lot of unique aspects like this digital display on top of the tank and these diamond cut alloy wheels, which you don't get in a lot of bikes. In terms of ergonomics, the bike has been designed to give you a lot of comfort on long rides. So, Put your feet over the saddle and you have a lot of space, enough to be comfortable, have quite a lot of leverage and be in quite a lot of control. 
One problem I have got is that the pillion seat is rather hard, so long distances as a pillion could be a little bit of trouble, but the Duke's one is much worse. So the Duke 390 and the Dominar 400 share their engines, well kind of. The bottom half of the Dominar 400 is identical to the Duke 390 and a lot of the parts are basically the same, but the main difference is that the Duke 390 and the Dominar 400 are in completely different states of tune. Yes, the engines are the same, technically 373cc liquid cooled single cylinder engines, but the KTM is much more aggressive and it produces 43 bhp whereas the Dominar only produces 40 bhp. Both bikes are mated to a 6 speed gearbox which have a slip and assist clutch. Uh, the Duke 390 also gets a quick shifter which is very useful because the Duke 390 is specifically made to be a scalpel on the canyons and have tons of power. So that's why the quick shifter is definitely a good addition and this only came with the BS6 update. Uh, and this thing is an absolute monster when it comes to the top end. Whereas the Dominar is quite different. It has a very strong mid-range and that is very useful because the Dominar is more of a tourer. So that's very helpful when you're on long rides so that you don't have to keep on switching gears to get into the power band. And yep, the Dominar is one heck of a touring machine. Just like the Triumph Speed 400, the Duke 390 also takes inspiration from its elder siblings. Stuff like the 790 Duke or the Super Duke R. The Duke 390 over the years has started to look like its elder brothers. And especially with the BS6 update with this fancy new livery and the matte grey paint, well, it looks really, really aggressive and sharp. And yeah, I think so. I really like the look of this bike and especially with this uh, exposed trellis frame finish in KTM's orange, it's a very menacing looking bike. If you see this thing from up front, it looks like an insect that's ready to bite you and I absolutely love that about the Duke 390. When it comes to the ergonomics of the Duke 390, it's definitely the most aggressive bike over here. It feels like you're sitting on top of the bike and you have tons of control over it. And this especially can be felt when you're riding this thing hard because this thing is definitely the benchmark in its category. Nothing over the years has come close to the Duke 390 when it comes to its cornering abilities and its power. If you can take a corner properly in this thing and you can pin it when it's on corner exit, there is nothing like a Duke 390 when it comes to that specific job. And with the rider aids that the Duke 390 has, stuff like the quick shifter, you have uh, ABS control, you have traction control and everything is switchable and customizable to whatever setting that you like. The Duke 390 is definitely my pick when it comes to something that's fun on the weekends. Hop over the saddle of the Triumph and you're in a very comfortable place. You lean ever so slightly towards the handlebars and your foot pegs are right under your torso line which make it really comfortable to ride on the move but it's a little annoying while crawling through traffic but that can be lived with. One thing I found to be a personal concern was just how thin this tank is. While gripping it with your thighs, it feels a little bit awkward and it took me a little while to get used to it. But I'm pretty sure a set of tank pads could fix the issue altogether. In terms of comfort, the seats are very nice and soft and the suspension irons out the bumps very nicely for the sake of your bump. Now, the only thing that's left is see how it is on the move and see how this bike actually performs. Now with all of the stats and figures hopefully fixated in your mind, let us jump into how these bikes are on the move. Let's start with the Domi. The Dominar is the most quote-unquote normal one out of these three. It doesn't have any little quirks or any weird flaws. It is just a good bike. Now some would say this lack of character probably makes the Domina boring to ride. Well, that depends on the situation. Yes, it's not as lively as the Duke or the Speed, but it is the most comfy, relaxed and tame motorcycle. The exact recipe you need for a great tourer. 
but that doesn't mean that the Dominar is slow. It still has close to 40 bhp and with its amazing mid-range, you can literally surf on a wave of torque in any gear which is quite satisfying. Next up, you have the Duke 390. No surprise here, it is unlike anything else, especially with a single cylinder. Even after so many years of the Duke 390 being on the market, every time I get on one, it surprises me each and every time with its unbelievable power. The quick shifter, especially when you're hooning the bike, is a treat to operate and the Duke 390 is just so sharp in the corners. It's not the easiest bike to ride hard. It might take some time getting used to it, but if you get it right, it is one of the most rewarding motorcycles by far. Moreover, it has gotten easier to ride hard because of the rider aids. Of course, it loses to the Dominar in terms of the touring aspect and probably to the speed in terms of comfort and daily usability. But if you are someone looking to have a good time, there's nothing like the good old Duke 390. And now, time to talk about the latest creation from Chakan, the Speed 400. The easiest way to describe it is that it is the jack of all trades but master of none. It does everything well but in certain areas the Duke and Dominar just edge ahead. In terms of handling, power and raw speed, the Duke 390 edges the Speed 400 but the grunt of the new 3R series engine is impressive and moreover is much more dramatic because of the amazing sounds it makes. You can make out that the Duke and Dominar are related, but the Triumph sounds completely different. It pops and bangs on upshifts and crackles and burbles on downshifts. Coming to touring, of course the Dominar is superior because of its more laid-back riding position, strong mid-range and gearing, but the Speed 402 has a pretty strong mid-range and comfy riding position. If you want it, probably with a windscreen, the Speed 400 could be used as a tourer. The Speed 400, however, has both bikes beat in a couple of places. It looks much better, sounds much better and is definitely the better bike to ride in urban conditions. Well, who's the winner from this test? Honestly speaking, the Indian biking market and Bajaj of course. All three bikes, even though on paper might look pretty similar, all of them serve different purposes and cater to different types of riders and more importantly, are pushing more and more people to hop onto some nice bikes. In that way, Bajaj is doing an amazing job in getting some awesome products like the Duke 390 and Speed 400 in the hands of young enthusiasts. At the end of the day, you're going to try and take a mature decision. My mature decision is that the Triumph Speed 400 is the best built, it is the prettiest looking bike and it is the most versatile. I wouldn't get the Dominar just because it is only a mild muncher and it is a little too bulky in the streets and uh, the Duke 390 is very wild and it's just not going to be something that you want to ride every day. If you're tired, you're just not going to feel like riding. That's why the Triumph is my choice. Well, if you aren't a soft boy like Bhavni, you would definitely go and choose this thing over here, the Duke 390. And I agree with Bhavni on all of the points. The Speed 400 is an amazing motorcycle, definitely the most versatile one out of all three over here. And the Dominar 400 is instantly not something that I would prefer. It just doesn't suit my lifestyle. I don't take my bikes out of the city and I'm not really that, I'm not really a touring kind of a guy. So if I had to buy a bike out of these three, it would be the Duke 390 well because I am a very edgy type of guy. I love performance and I love the way that the Duke 390 rides and yeah, it's super aggressive and I really like that about the bike. On that note, uh, that's the real youth of TDH. Soham Saraf and the mature decision from TDH Bhavni Paswani. It's been a really nice day and it's been a very nice time with these bikes. I'll see you guys in the next one.